Now, after a potentially groundbreaking discovery last year, NASA's James Webb Space Telescope is being used to investigate tentative evidence of a sign of life on another planet. You can't say those things lightly, can you? We well, didn't. Very, very significant. Potentially. 120 light years away. I'd said 120 million light years away earlier. I don't really know the difference. I mean, obviously, Five one's, million, one's bigger. I think. Approximately. Scientists detected molecules of a gas in the planet's atmosphere, which on Earth is only produced by living organisms. That is... That's, that's kind of, like, tantalising, isn't it? Jane McCubbin can explain whether this could lead to confirmation of life beyond our existence. It is a question that has intrigued mankind for millennia. Oh, there is definitely life on other planets. I think the universe is abundant, you know, with life. I'm sure if we detected that, it would be the most incredible thing we'd ever done. First, we searched the stars from the ground, and then we went further. And we have engine start and lift off. On Christmas Day 2021, the James Webb rocket launched. James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the universe. Inside, the biggest telescope ever sent into space. We can look further back towards the origin of the universe so it can see the first stars and galaxies forming. And, amazingly, it can look into the atmospheres of planets around distant stars, trying to understand what those atmospheres are like. It has revealed breathtaking images from galaxies millions of light years away. But yesterday, it turned its gaze towards a distant planet called K218b to investigate the presence of a gas a gas which, on Earth at least, is only produced by life. A tantalising hint, if it is proven that life could exist beyond our tiny world. Still tantalising. That was our reporter, Jane McCubbin. We're joined now by Niku Madhusudan, who's the Professor of Astrophysics and Exoplanetary Science at the University of Cambridge. Good morning to Very you. Very good morning. How excited are you about this? Very excited, but also very um, uh, cautious on what, what we are going to find and what the implications would be. OK, well, what would be the best result in terms of what you could find? Um, so there are two end member scenarios, so to speak. So we might uh, find a very strong signal of dry dimethyl sulfide uh, showing us that robust lead is there in the atmosphere of this planet. And uh, that would be quite remarkable. And the consequences of that? The consequences are immense, uh, because you have to realize this is the first time we are seeing an Earth-like biomarker, would be seeing if, if it's confirmed, in a planet outside the solar system. Now, it could be from life on that planet, or it could be from some other mechanism that we have never heard of before. Either way, it's going to be groundbreaking. You use the, you use the word biomarker there. So the biomarker is the indication that life is there, has been there, or was there. Is that right? Is there, yeah. Is there. Yeah. So if you find the biomarker, there is life on that planet. So th that is the bit we can't say for sure, because it would be for an Earth-like planet. It is on Earth. But for this kind of a planet, we have to understand whether it is a robust signature given the context, the, the environment of that planet. So, so that is also an open question that we need to look into. All right, first stupid question. How does a telescope see gas? So you look at the starlight as the planet is going in front of it. So some of that starlight passes through the atmosphere of the starlight, planet. Starlight, so, yeah. OK. Right. So this is a transit we are talking about. So that starlight passes through the atmosphere of the planet before reaching the telescope. And imprinted on that starlight are features, absorption features due to the molecules in the atmosphere of the planet. So they're tiny features. We're talking about a part in 100,000. But then we have the techniques to take that spectrum and extract the chemicals, uh, the abundances of the chemicals in the atmosphere of the planet. Uh, Professor, the, na the name of the department within which you work at Cambridge University is what? So I work at the Institute of Astronomy uh, at the University of Cambridge. But I'm also part of, uh, you know, a wider centre, the Leverhulme Centre for Life in the Universe at Cambridge. So there's a centre for life in the universe... Right. Which is, ..which is dedicated to investigating whether there is life elsewhere. Yeah. And within your scientific community... Can I ask you this as a scientist? Do you think 
Not necessarily talking about the evidence. Do you think there is life outside of what we know here? So there is a, and my personal opinion is that there is a high chance that, that there is life elsewhere. Yes. Why? Uh, just the statistics. Uh, 30 years ago, we knew of no planet outside the solar system. Today, our statistics are like almost every star out there has a planet around it. So we're really living in a profound time in the history of our species. So if you just extrapolate what we are finding for the numbers of planets and the kinds of planets we are seeing, it's, it almost feels like a certainty that there, there's got to be some kind of life elsewhere. The implications, I mean, you're a scientist, but the, the truth is that the implications of that discovery, as and when it can be kind of confirmed, or I, I don't know what the, the phraseology, the implications are, well, we, we do, it's so hard to comprehend, isn't yeah, it? They're immense, because they're on all levels, from societal, philosophical, scientific, they're, they're, they're huge. This is why we are extremely careful uh, in, in making any statements of confirmation. The telescope at the moment, the James Webb telescope, is looking at a planet which is imaginatively named K218b. OK. K218b, you have a theory, don't you, that it is like a water world. So how big is it compared to Earth? And when, it's, when you say a water world, What's a water world? So we, we call it a Hycian world, which is a combination of hydrogen and ocean. So this is an ocean world covered entirely in uh, oceans, and you won't see any landmass at all. And these oceans... What's under the ocean, then? Deep ocean, 100 kilometres or what more of ocean. What's at the bottom of the ocean? Very, very deep. Underneath could be rock, could be a core, but you never actually reach that core because it's just hundreds of kilometres of ocean and then ice that turns into high-pressure ice at the bottom. So you have a ice floor and then ocean, deep ocean. So how big is it compared to Earth? So it's two and a half times Earth uh, size and about nine Earth masses. And if it's got water, masses. if it's a Hycian, you said, yeah. mixture of hydrogen and water? Hydrogen and oxygen. oxygen. Uh, sorry, hydrogen and, and ocean. ocean. Yeah. ocean. Um, well, ocean's water, yeah? yeah? Yeah. So it's got to have life. Th that it, it's got to have the right temperature and pressure, and we think this planet can have those. But uh, yes, you, you're right. So we think it is habitable in principle. But we have to establish that with our observations. Have you seen the film Waterworld? No. <laughs> have you not? I have not. Actually. Oh, well, it's a film. It's, it's a, a film where the Kevin Earth Costner? becomes all ocean. Mm -hmm. Is that a Kevin Costner film? Kevin Costner film. And I think it was yeah. the most... It lost the most money of any Hollywood film ever made. There you See? go. Yeah. You'll need to watch it now, cos then you'll get an idea of what K218B might look like. different from what you were talking about, to be fair. <laughs> right. Anyway, lovely to see this one. Yeah, uh, thank Professor you. Professor Madison, thank you. Yeah, it was